So Razer's back and this time we have a different approach. We have an all-in-one gaming headset that you can take pretty much everywhere with you and use for pretty much anything, or so they say. This does have a few drawbacks though, which we'll cover in today's episode, where we see if it's actually worth that $250 price point, especially while stacking it up against some of my favorite gaming headsets that are on today's market. So you have a full-on premium wireless gaming headset that comes in at 250 bucks. Now, if you guys remember a while back, we checked out the Razer Barracuda X, that's $100, which was one of the best budget wireless gaming headsets that you can still pick up today. Now on paper, this thing should cover all your bases, or so you'd think. It takes that same design and now adds a look that fits in everywhere with a few new features. For build, you still get that all black stealth design that looks like it took a page from Sony's WH-1000XM5s. Your ear cups sport memory foam that's wrapped in full leather and extends to the top of the headband, while still somewhat sporting a nice fit with a presence similar to the Barracuda X. Now the only giveaway here that it is an actual gaming headset is you still see that logo and that glossy matte finish on the back of the ear cups and you do see a slight hint of green when you're not using that microphone mute switch. That's pretty much it. Now getting into the first setback for me is your traditional boom mic has now been replaced with small slots along the front of the ear cups, which house built-in microphones that you imagine wouldn't sound nearly as good. The left ear cup has your USB Type-C port for charging, a power and mic mute button, your volume wheel, and that's pretty much it. Your right ear cup sports your button to toggle ANC, as well as different sources for the headset. Now one thing I do like about the Razer Barracuda Pro is this travel case that we get with this headset. You have a nice compartment in the middle to where you can house your USB Type-C dongle, which is very small and easy to lose, so make sure you guys don't lose that, and a few other cables. It does have a magnetic flap, so you don't have to worry about this thing opening, but I do wish that the ear cups on this headset would have folded like the XM3s or XM4s from Sony to where we would get that smaller form factor, but that's just not the case with these. I'm just glad that we now have a travel case to where we can actually store our USB Type-C dongle and our cables and not have to worry about losing them, especially when we're out traveling. Now, if you are someone who's just starting off with streaming and gaming, you know what's just as important, something I wish I would have had a long time ago, is a one-stop shop such as own.tv to help you fully customize your stream, really make it pop and take it to the next level. From camera overlays to graphics titles to animations, pretty much anything you could think of on a budget, own.tv has got you guys covered for it. Own.tv is who I've used in the past and has been my go-to for everything when it comes to graphics, titles, and templates such as animated screens, badges, stream deck icons, and overlays to keep you looking crisp when going live or recording your videos. What's even more appealing is the ease of use you get when checking out and customizing everything to set the aesthetic you're going for in your setup. Best of all, I've got you guys covered with a 50% off coupon if you use my coupon code and link that's down below in the description. So make sure you guys check that out once this video is over and thank you to Own.tv for sponsoring this segment of today's episode. For connectivity, you can pair this headset with your PC, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation consoles, as well as other devices that sport a USB Type-C port, such as your Android. Now, if that doesn't do it for you, then you can also rock this headset with Bluetooth when you're on the go and need more freedom. Now, I would like to mention that you don't get multiple device support with this headset, which is my second drawback for 250 bucks. You can't use the Bluetooth and the transmitter at the same time like you can with the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, so you can listen to music, make phone calls, and game at the same time. It doesn't work, which I feel like is definitely something that should be standard on a premium gaming headset at this price point. That's my second drawback. My third, there's no wired connection. So you're marketing this as an all-in-one gaming headset for streamers and gamers that they can take pretty much everywhere with them, but they can't even watch a movie on their flight through a wired connection because it doesn't have a port for a 3.5 millimeter cable. Not to mention, if you lose that USB Type-C dongle, you're pretty much screwed and can only use the headset in its Bluetooth pairing mode. You can't even use it as a wired connection when the headset's dead all setbacks for me at 250 bucks. Now I would like to think that the setbacks kind of stop there, but then you have to download the Razer Synapse software to get full functionality from this headset. Now for me, the software has gotten a lot better over the years, but still remains buggy at times. Using it enables the THX spatial audio and bass boost, where you can also play with your EQ settings based on your play style and the games that you enjoy running. And then we have the active noise cancellation, which in my opinion, in my testing was subpar, even worse than the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless that we checked out a few weeks back. That headset in itself was pretty bad as well, especially in comparison to something like the JBL Quantum 800. The active noise cancellation just wasn't there for me. Comparing this to something like the Sony XM5s or a headset from Bose, I mean, it just doesn't even come close. When it came to gaming performance, the headset redeemed itself, but only with the Synapse software running. Mids, highs, and lows came out decent when running games like Call of Duty and Halo. And it also did a decent job when listening to some of my favorite songs as well. Hearing footsteps and directional audio worked about the same for me as other Barracuda models, but fell short for what I expected for this headset at this price point. So by now you're probably asking yourself, well, the microphone, how does it sound? 
To be quite honest, I'm curious to know myself, especially not having a traditional microphone on this headset. Let's take this thing into the game room, stack it up against some of my favorite gaming headsets that are out in today's market. While we also see how much background noise and keyboard clicks the microphone in this headset actually picks up. Now while we're here, let's cover sound isolation and noise bleeding. Now as long as you're above half volume, you should be somewhat fine. I mean, the active noise cancellation is not the best on this headset. We already talked about it. It doesn't come close to the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro or even the JBL Quantum 800 for that matter, which in my opinion is the best active noise cancellation you can get on a gaming headset. So you can hear your surroundings, fans, humming, stuff like that. Just make sure your volume is above half and you should be somewhat fine. Now I have a massive head. The ear cups do fit rather snug, so it's fine. You wouldn't have to worry about it too much if you're wearing glasses. The ear cups don't really press against your temples too much, so the overall fit is nice. It just doesn't have that premium feel that you get with something like the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. And then that brings us to ear sweat. In those longer gaming sessions, I really didn't experience too much ear sweat, so that's a good thing. But then again, it all depends on your environment. If you're in a room that's 100 degrees, you're going to experience some ear sweat in those longer sessions. Now, you guys know the drill. Game room. It's a new game room, not even close to being finished yet, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Currently, I'm talking to you guys on the Shure MV7. Let's go ahead and switch over to the microphone on the Razer Barracuda Pro so you guys can see what it sounds like in comparison. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda Pro. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. And only if you end up liking this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me. Now let's stack up the microphone quality in this headset versus the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless the Corsair HS80 wireless, the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wireless, and the JBL Quantum 800. By the way, if you guys are wondering, yes, I have the vocal voice clarity turned on with the microphone on this headset, but you do have to turn on in the Razer Snap software. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda Pro. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair HS80 wireless gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the JBL Quantum 800 wireless gaming headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda Pro. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair HS80 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the JBL Quantum 800 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro wireless gaming headset. Let me know down below in the comment section which one of these you guys think sounds the best. By the way, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Razer Barracuda Pro with the voice clarity turned off in the Synapse software. It sounds about the same. There's a few parts where it does seem like it's a little bit more crisp. But overall, I feel like there isn't too much of a crazy difference between the voice clarity turned on and off. But I figured I'd give you a test and sound check with what it sounds like with the voice clarity turned off. We did the test with the voice clarity turned on when we did the microphone comparisons, just for reference. Now, another test I like doing for you guys is to see how much keyboard clicking the microphones on these headsets actually pick up. So we're about a foot and a half away from the keyboard here. It doesn't seem to be picking up anything, which is good. I do have the active noise cancellation on the microphone turned on to the high setting in the Synapse software. So I'm glad that they actually included that. So yeah, it doesn't pick up too much at all. It does pick up a little bit more when I start talking because that's when my noise gate opens up. So yeah, whether you're talking to your friends in Discord, party chat, game chat, whether you plan on streaming or recording with this headset, that's what the microphone quality sounds like, and that's how much keyboard clicking it actually picks up. At 250 bucks, it is considerably cheaper than the Arctis Nova Pro Wireless, but in no way, shape, sound, or form does this headset even come close to that model for me. You don't have multiple device support. The mics aren't the best. The active noise cancellation is subpar, and most of the functionality in terms of performance needs the Synapse software to fully operate. With that said, there's still a market for this headset, and some gamers wouldn't mind spending 250 bucks for this. For me, I'm either going with the JBL Quantum 800 when I can find that on deal for 150 bucks, or going all out and picking up the SteelSeries Arctis Nova Pro Wireless at that $350 price point. But I'm curious to know what you guys think. Let me know down below where you'll also find the links to everything that we covered in today's episode. If you wanna see more, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Detroit Fury. And if you enjoyed this content, please make sure you smash that like button for me, subscribe. Turn on your post notifications, it really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in my next episode. Peace.